All right, so second day of the practice test, we did everything through number nine. So we're at number 10. Now, originally we were just supposed to have two days off, and now we've got three and kind of two hours that, that happened. So on number 10, do you remember what the first step would be to do? Divide by two. Yep. We have x minus 2 to the 2 thirds will equal 25. How about now? Looking familiar? Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Make it a run? We can. The other class did that as well. They made it um, the cube root of x minus 2 squared. Let's do it that way, and then I'm going to show you the other way to do it, okay? Now our whole problem is we have to get rid of that little square up there. How do we get rid of square to something? Which feels really weird because we're taking the square root of a cube root, but it's okay because they're just going to cancel each other out over here. So we'll get the cube root of x minus 2 equals... Now here's what's important. Whenever you physically write down the square root symbol, what do you have to do with that one? It does have to be plus or minus. Oops, I'm going to the next step already. Ah, I'll go ahead and put the 5 down. You guys know what the square root of 25 is. So then we'd have to do the cube root of x minus 2 equals negative 5, and cube root of x minus 2 equals positive 5. Before we do that, I want to show you the other way to solve this. So let's go back up to this step right here. The other way to solve this is to raise it to the reciprocal power and put absolute value bars down because the number that we have in the bottom is a different number. And then you'd realize, okay, square root of 25 is 5, 5 to the third, that's one. So x minus 2 could equal negative 125, and x minus 2 could equal positive 125. That's the way the book taught us to do it. But we talked about all the way through. If you can understand it by doing roots, then you do the roots. All right, so let's go back to where you guys were in the green. How do you get rid of cube rooting? Cube it. So we'll get x minus 2 equals negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, which is negative 1.5. And cubing over here, x minus 2 equals 125. One step to solving both of those. What's the one step? Adding to each other. So x equals negative 123, and x equals 127. That's exactly what we would have got if we came back here. So now, it says up at the top, and we can't forget this, check for extraneous solutions. So, we've got 2 times negative 123 minus 2 to the 2 thirds equals 50. So let's talk through this one. What's negative 123 minus 2? Too hard. Negative 123 minus 2. Negative 125. What's the cube root of negative 125? Negative 5. Square that. What do you get? 25. What's 2 times 25? This one works. I'm going to check the other one. So the other one is 2 times 127 minus 2 to the 2 thirds equals 50. And right now, some of you are saying, see, Jerome, I would check this in my I would put 127 minus 2 to the 2 thirds power times 2 and make sure that it comes out to 50. That's what you would talk about. But by using your head, you can say 125 minus, 127 minus 2 is 125. Cube root of 125 is 5. 5 squared is going to be 25. 2 times 25 is 50. And I got it. So both of those work. Both of the solutions end up working for this one. And that took a lot more space than the space that was in for number 10. But like I said, I wanted to show you the way that the book showed us how to do that by raising it to the reciprocal power and then 
go on the way you guys did is fine too, as long as you remember when you take the square root, you only do plus or minus. Alrighty, now we're talking about our functions. It says let f of x equal x squared minus 3 and g of x equal x plus 4, perform each function operation and then find the domain. So f of x divided by g of x. Well, f of x is x squared minus 3 and g of x is x plus 4. The only way we can simplify this is if x squared minus 3 is factorable. So we come up with two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 0. all we could do because we can't cancel unless we see pure multiplication and we can't do it. But there is a number we can't use here because there's division. What number if we put it in there would be bad? Let's look at your denominator. What's going to make this zero down here? Negative four. So we have to tell people we can't use negative four. There's only two things we watch for to restrict our domain and that's going to be anytime there's an even root it has to be a positive value and then if we're going to divide we can't use the number that's going to make us divide by zero. Well number 12 says let's take f of x okay x squared minus 3 and let's subtract x plus 4. Now notice how I use parentheses that's really important in this one because this has the most common mistake made in mathematics. You don't put those parentheses up there because what do we have to do with that negative in the middle? We do have to distribute that negative. So we distribute that negative and we notice, hey, there's a couple of numbers we can put together. We'll have x squared minus x minus 7. So that would be our answer. While we were doing this problem, did we ever take a square root or four root or six root or eight root? Okay. Um, did we ever divide? Well, then it doesn't have any restrictions. So what do we put down for the domain if there's no restrictions? All real numbers. That's the R. An extra line on. Yeah, there it is. So you do the math as far as you can take it and then talk about that domain. All righty, away we go. Composite. Composition is what we're going to talk about here. And this says find the composite function. And there's no number. So that means we have to take the entire function and substitute it into the other function. Which one goes into which? If it says g of f of x, which one goes into the other function? Well, it does. Yeah. This has to go in there. So this has to go who? Where? What variable is the input? say negative 2x plus 6 squared plus 7. Can we distribute that in layer 2? No. Closest thing to its left is parentheses. We have to write down the entire parentheses twice. Which means some FOIL. It's not horrible FOIL, but it's FOIL. First times first, 4x squared. Outside times outside is negative 12x, but so is inside times inside, so that's going to be minus 24x. Last times last will be plus 36, plus 7. Are we done? Why, what can we do? If you said no, what's left? 36 and 7, exactly. Combine like terms. 4x squared minus 24x plus 4 squared. There it is. That's what you would get for that composite function. Take a look at 14. Which one's going into which one? G is going into F. So this is going there. This is going there. Ooh, I see a most common mistake made here. Do you see the extra negative? Yeah, people forget that negative and then you're in trouble. Because we have to subtract everything in here. That means we have to distribute. Is that one done? What's left? What's left? Yeah, why don't you put the two numbers?
years ago. Did it say we had to give them domain range or any of that kind of stuff? Oh, well, you're done. You had to do a lot harder stuff than that. No, no, no. You're asking us all kinds of questions about all of this. So just put it into the other one. And if you're thinking, how do they know which one goes in? Remember, it's the one that's closest to the X. That's the one that goes into the other function. But really, we like these. You guys are really good at these. Because this gives us a number to put in. So negative 3 goes into what first? G. All right, so that's going to be right here. So it's going to say negative 3 squared plus 2. What's negative 3 times negative 3? Nine. So this will be 9 plus 2. Okay, we got 11. Are we done? No, because where does it go now? Yeah, it has to go in the F. So we're going to take this 11 and we're going to put it in here. 2 times 11 minus 7. What's 2 times 11? 22. What's 22 minus 7? 15. And we want to box that or circle it or something because there's a whole lot of math up there and I need to know that you know where your answer is. I mean, for everything. Does this one say talk about domains or any of that kind of stuff? That one's done then too. It's pretty quick. Alright, inverses. Oh, 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 you guys know these. There's two steps to finding an inverse. What's step one? Switch the X and the Y. f of x, g of x, h of x, those are all these fancy notation for functions for output. So we've got to switch the x and the y. And what's step two? Solve for y. Okay, so that means we have to get y by itself. What about that square root thing, Ryan? How do you get rid of the square root? Square it. Square both sides. squared equals y plus 16. Almost there. How do you get y by itself? Subtract 16. So x squared minus 16 equals y. Now if you want to be really fancy, you can write f inverse of x equals x squared minus 16. I will give you credit for y equals What does x squared minus 16 look like if you graph it? What's x squared look like if you graph it? It's a parabola. Minus 16 means you're going to move it down 16 units. Is that a function? Sure it is. It passes the vertical line test. And this is yes. So the first thing you could do for your explain would be you could draw me a picture of a parabola. That way I know. And then you could do this, and you could write passes the VLD. But you could also write for every input, there is exactly, finish that for me. For every input, there is exactly one output. Yeah. So when it says explain, you could use that. Explain why and how that is an inverse. For every input, there's exactly one output. We don't have a plus or minus, so one output. Alrighty, this little bugger. What's step one? Have already forgotten? Switch the x and the y. Again, remember that this is y. Over, so you know, you let your, your quota for sleep and you're over and so is your quota for sleep. How do we get y by itself? Add 7. Almost by itself. What else? Square root. Oh, what do you have to do when you physically make a 
the square root symbol. Plus or minus. So again, we could make this fancy and say f to the negative 1 equals plus or minus square root of x plus 7. Or we could write y equals plus or minus square root of x plus 7. Is that going to be a function? No? Why not? How many outputs does it have? As two outputs. As two outputs. Over to the graphic. We've got to keep the super on the graphic. All right. So analyze the transformation. Graph the parent function and transform function. Find the domain and range of the transform function. So let me ask you this. We have to have a parent to graph in the table. What are the two things we never take along to do the parent function? Give me letters. What are the two letters we never take along? H and K. Exactly. So these are going to stay where they're at. Everything else becomes our parent function. In this case, there's no number in front that wasn't negative there, so that's like a negative one. What's that to do that? Hmm. Give me some nice numbers for square root. more nice ones. Now we're not going to graph the 16 and put it because the space on it has to be filling. That's just what we do. Alrighty, so let's put a zero in there. They can't have a negative zero. It's just going to be zero. Put a one in. What do you get? Negative one. Put a four in. What do you get? Put a nine in. What do you get? Put a 16 in, what do you get? Dashed or solid? Is this going to be our final graph? No, we still have to move it H and K. So this is dashed, dotted, whatever you want to call it. 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 9, negative 3. And like I said, we're not going to try and graph. 16, negative 4. We have enough nice ones as it is. So, yeah. There are all of our nice things. And now we have to figure out how to move them so we can make it solid. And remember, there's all kinds of counter things in your bag. So if you're, you can do that on the test too. If you want to. Where are we moving this thing? Right to. Down three. Yeah, that's always the one that's with the x you have to think opposite. So when it says x minus two, it's actually going to be to the right. So this is just going to be counting two to the right and three down. To say this to go in range, which is much harder if you don't do this one little step. I want you to label the ordered pair for this new starting point. What is it? Two, negative three. Good. Because this is where your x's are starting, and this is where your y's are starting. And all you have to do is this. X's are about right and left. If your graph is going to the right forever, then it's greater than or equal to. If your graph is going to the left forever, then it's less than or equal to. So which one is this one then? Greater than or equal to. We're going to the right forever with our new graph. Range either goes up or down. Up is greater than or equal to, and down is less than or equal to. So which one should we use for this one? Less than or equal to. It's going down. And you already told me the shift. You said to go right two and down three. Cool. Let's put that on there. Come on. There we go. Right. Down three. Done. Perfect. Everything's beautiful. Cool. So let's go to this one. 
which just happens to be a beauty root. What don't we take along again when we're doing our table? H and K. Everything else goes. Oh, well, there isn't much else here. It's Y equals the cube root of X. Because we don't take the 1 and we don't take the 3. Okay, good numbers for cube root. Negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. All of the perfect cubes between negative 10 and 10. So what is the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2. Cube root of negative 1? Negative 1. Cube root of 0? Cube root of 1? 1. Cube root of 8. Dash the solid. Dashed, yeah. This is not our final. This is our nice shape graph. Cube root of 8, cube root of 2. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8 each. Where are we going to translate this? Right one and up three. One, up three. So we'll just take those five very beautiful points that we just had and move them over to the right and see that. I don't see a starting place. Do you see a starting place? So what do we put for domain and range? Yep, all there is. This goes forever. Right, left, up, down. And you already told me what the shift was. You said it was right one and up three. There it is. Again, it's a little uh, blank space. Fill it in. You know? I know we didn't go as far as 16 when we were doing these in class, but it never hurts to have something to add. All right, the number 20. Something's wrong with that. Something's got to go. What's the something? Squared 16, yeah, because remember we want y equals a square roots of x minus h plus k. We don't want anything in front of that x underneath that radical. We're going to graph it the easy way. So that would mean we have to factor it out. So you can either think of it as dividing, or you can think of it as, well, if I took the square root of 16 times something, I have to get the square root of 16 out. Oh, it has to be x, because 16 times x is 16 x. Square root of 16 times something has to give me that square root of negative 32. So what's the something? It has to be negative. Now, why would we do that? Because that looks really ugly. See something nice there? What's nice? That's four. Now, I know this doesn't say it, but let's just say that it does on the test. It says describe the transformations, because that's usually what we do this for. So, what's this four going to? Stretch. Factor of four. How about that x minus two? What's that going to be? Translate. Right. Two. And how about the eight? Now, I want you to keep back at 1 through 9 and see if the three days off was a little bit too much. And you're looking 
at it now and think of each of their basketball caps. Remember, I said, if anybody messes up, it's on one and four. If you look at one and four, everything makes sense again? <laughs> 